Pretty soon after the ancient Greeks first asked about the shape of the earth, they appreciated that the earth is round, like a ball. I'm going to tell you about one of the arguments that helped settle the question. It comes from Aristotle, who in the middle of the 4th century BC was living and philosophizing in Athens. Let me read out your translation of his argument. If the earth were not spherical, eclipses of the moon would not have its segments of the kind that they do. As it is, in its monthly phases, the moon takes on all sorts of divisions between its light part and its dark. It gets to be straight-edged and gibbous and crescent. But in eclipses, it's always a bulging line that the moon has to separate its light part from its dark. Thus, since the moon is eclipsed because the earth is put between it and the sun, the cause of this shape must be that the earth surface that encompasses the earth is spherical. Let's just spell this out a bit more. In his proof that the earth is spherical, Aristotle's relying on some facts about lunar eclipses. Those funny events when the moon is full and you expect it to be displaying a nice round shiny disc, but it fails to live up to expectations and some or all of it is dark. The Greek word for failure is eclipsis, which gives us our word eclipse. So why does the moon fail to shine during an eclipse? To answer that, we need first to sort out why the moon succeeds in shining when it does succeed in shining. The moon does not have any light of its own. It shines when it does shine, only because it's reflecting back light from the sun. We can tell this from the phases of the moon. Sometimes the moon is new, with only a tiny little crescent shining. Sometimes it's half full. Sometimes it's gibbous or three quarters full and so on. Those phases are coordinated exactly with the positions of sun, moon and earth. For example, we get a half moon when the straight line from us on the earth to the moon forms a right angle with the straight line from the moon to the sun. We get a full moon when the sun and the moon are on opposite sides of the earth and so on. The only way these phases could be as they are is if the moon has no light of its own and shines only because it reflects light from the sun. So what happens in an eclipse? The moon's on the other side of the earth from the sun. The full disk should be shining, but it isn't. That can only be because the earth has blocked the sun and stopped its light from reaching the moon. In an eclipse, the moon has got into the shadow cast by the earth. So what's the shape of the earth's shadow? The earth's shadow is always round. The edge of it that we see passing across the face of the moon is always an arc of a circle. So, what shape can the Earth be that it always casts a circular shadow? If it were this shape, its shadow would never be circular. If it were this shape, its shadow might sometimes be circular, but it wouldn't be reliably circular. The only way for the shadow of the Earth to be circular always is if the Earth is spherical. So that's the proof. Let's read it out again. If the earth were not spherical, eclipses of the moon would not have segments of the kind that they do. As it is in its monthly phases, the moon takes on all sorts of divisions between its light part and its dark. It gets to be straight edged and gibbous and crescent. But in eclipses, it's always a bulging line that the moon has to separate its light part from its dark. Thus, since the moon is eclipsed because the earth is put between it and the sun, the cause of this shape must be that the surface that encompasses the earth is spherical. It's a beautiful bit of reasoning. And one of the things I love about studying classics is studying people who invented such reasoning.